like to thank the organization for giving me the opportunity to present our results. In this presentation, I will show you an overall focus on chronic intestinal pseudostruction with a brief background on RAD21 mutation studies in vivo and zebrafish model. In the results section, I will show you the results from all exon sequencing analysis with new genetic variants that we found in genes not yet associated to chronic intestinal pseudostruction. Chronic intestinal pseudostruction is a rare chronic and progressive condition characterized by a severe impairment of gastrointestinal motility. Clinical picture mimicking a mechanical obstruction in the absence of any anatomic abnormalities in the gut. Patients have marker abdominal distension, pain, nausea, vomiting, constipation and diarrhea, and weight loss in the long term. This condition could be idiopathic or secondary to a variety of diseases, and so far only few genetic cases, causes are identified. Regarding the genetic point of view, we know that uh, CIPO is related to different mutations identified in different genes such as autosomal dominant genes like SOX10, ACTG2, and ACTA2, X-linked like LFNA, FLNA, sorry, and autosomal recessive genes like TIM, POLG, MyH11, SGOL1, and ZERAT21. But there is no significant overlaps with Ischprung disease genes. In our lab, we identified using all exon sequencing analysis a novel missing change in RAD21 in a family, a Turkish family with CIPO patients. This uh, missing change is a substitution of alanine to treonine in position 622, and we also analyzed 1,000 control chromosomes of Turkish origins, and we didn't find the same mutation. Really briefly, RAD21 is a part of the cohesin complex, this ring in the picture, that is linked to SMC3, SMC1, and STAG subunits, and is important for sister chromatic pairing and unpairing. We analyzed this mutation in vivo using zebrafish model, and as you can see from the first panel, we analyzed the intestinal motility using microgavage technique. And in the first graph, we show that in the zebrafish control, there is a completely uh, emptying of the gut. But when we analyze the RAT21 morpholino, there is a complete delete in the food transit. So furthermore, we also analyze UCD marker uh, for the enteric neurons. And as you can see from the picture, there is a reduction in the number of UCD positive cells in the RAT21 morpholino compared to the control. So, put together, these two uh, results suggest that the motility defect is because of a neurogenic reason. We also observe the same situation in the patient from the Turkish family. As you can see in the immunohistochemistry analysis, there is also a reduction in the number of enteric neurons in the patients compared to the control. So, we can say that the phenotype in zebrafish reminiscent of human CIPO. The principal aim of this study is to identify other genetic abnormalities underlying gut dysfunction in a large cohort of CIPO patients. To, in order to do that, we did two different steps in the method session. In the first step, we performed an olexon sequencing analysis, and after that, we identified seven genes in CIPO patients, which include four trio CIPO with small fiber neuropathy and three CIPO sporadic cases. But no single gene mutations in, there is no single gene mutations in neurogenic CIPO. In the second step, we perform target gene sequencing analysis. We are uh, using a custom panel with the design studio by Lumina covering all genes we found in Wolexon sequencing analysis, which include RAT21 and several uh, different sodium channel um, genes from ACN family and uh, channel subunits. We include 111 cases in this study that are CIPO are related patients with clinical, radiological, and manometrical evaluation, which include 82 Italian cases 
and 29 Swedish cases in collaboration with Professor Lindberg and Professor D'Amato at Karolinska Institute. But let's go to the results. These tables show the list of gene, uh, gene variants that we found after the target panel. And um, there is an overall uh, frequency of mutation of about 14.4%, as you can see from the uh, graph. What was interesting for us that is uh, the majority of these uh, variants are on SEN uh, genes. And also three of them are on SEN11A gene. This is interesting because we know from literature that sodium voltage gate channels SEN11A, that are some gene variants that are uh, already described in some episodic pain syndrome and familiar and neuropathy, uh, uh, hereditary and sensory and autonomic type of neuropathy. And also, as you can see from the Another study from the picture, there is an overlap with the, the sodium channel 1.9 and, and the neuronal filament 200 in the myenteric plexus of mouse colon. And also, null mice develop an altered gut motility along with sensory abnormalities. So, that could be interesting for us to better uh, study, to, uh, to study furthermore, this variant that we found in SCN11A and uh, in a uh, CIPO female patient. Uh, equally interesting are other two variants that we found in B3G82 in red and SMC3. B3G82 is an uh, enzyme involved in the biosynthesis of uh, HNK1 epitope. HNK1 epitope is a carbohydrate epitope present on neuronal addition glycoproteins such as NCAM and important for synaptic plasticity and memory formation. B3D82 is involved in neuronal addition and migration. For this reason, it could be interesting to us to study these two different variants that we found. One in an Italian case is a, a male case of 30 years old with uh, CIPO and uh, small fiber uh, neuropathy, is a de novo mutation. And another one in a Swedish case is 60 years old female and is a very premature stop codon. SMC3 variant is also interesting for us because as I mentioned before, SMC3 is a part of the cohesin complex linked to RAT21 and SMC1. So this variant is on the ring. And uh, this is a, a mutation um, a variant on uh, uh, the uh, male patient of 20 years old with uh, CIPO and severe gut hypogangliosis. And this uh, um, and this uh, amino acid is uh, completely preserved in all the species that we analyzed. The future direction of this study is to uh, analyze and to do a functional analysis of these uh, uh, variants that we found in this large cohort of patients using a genome editing approach like uh, CRISPR-Cas9 method. And we are currently uh, do uh, a knocking strategy of CRISPR-Cas9 in in vitro model. We choose the uh, SY cell line like a neuronal model in which one um, they express, as you can see from as you can see from the Western blot analysis, both SMC3 and b 3 g 2 protein. And also we are currently um, um, do an in vivo model uh, with a knock-in zebrafish for the variants that we found in SMC3 and b 3 g 2 to better understand the functionality of these variants. So, in conclusion, we can say that all exon sequencing analysis identified pathogenic variants in genes such as b 3 g 2 and SMC3 not yet associated to CIPO. Target gene sequencing analysis led us to identify additional mutations in genes previously detected by all exon sequencing analysis, as well as in other genes, which uh, with an overall frequencies of 14.4% mutations. Data confirm that uh, chronic intestinal pseudostruction is a genetically heterogeneous condition. And compared to a target gene panel, all exon sequencing analysis approach in families may provide a better genetic definition of individual cases. Functional study for the different identified genes 
are ongoing to understand the role of the molecular defects in severe gut dysmotility. I would like to thank my collaborators and also all of you for your kind attention. Thank you.